Hi, and welcome to Fire Tech Talk. I'm your host, Noah. Today, we're sitting down with Charles Vincent to talk about Hazmat. Charles has over 13 years of experience in the fire and life safety industry. He is also DOT, IATA, IMDG, and OSHA certified and trained. Charles, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Noah. Absolutely. So let's get into it. We know that HAZMAT stands for hazardous materials, but what exactly constitutes those? Well, DOT defines a hazardous material as any substance or material that can adversely affect the safety of the public, handlers, or carriers during transportation. These are also referred to as dangerous good or DG, but simply put, a product that can cause damage to a person, property, or the environment would be considered a hazardous material. That makes sense. So Charles, based off of what your explanation of hazardous materials are, would a fire extinguisher be considered hazardous? Yes, while fire extinguishers are considered life safety devices, they're still considered a hazmat in transport. They contain chemicals, which are eye irritants and inhalation hazards, and they're also compressed gas cylinders. While most fire extinguishers now are considered limited quantity, there are still risks and hazards involved in transporting them. So Charles, going off of that, can you give us some examples of common products that are used in the fire and life safety industry that are considered hazardous? Yeah, as stated before, fire extinguishers would be considered hazmat. Also batteries and cleaning supplies, paints are all considered hazardous materials. It's very important that the people handling these materials are properly trained to handle them. Absolutely. So Charles, it would seem that we use hazardous materials every day. How might a fire equipment distributor use them? An FED is going to find their warehouse filled with hazardous materials. Uh, as we mentioned, fire extinguishers, also sealed lead acid batteries are considered hazardous. Uh, paints, again, the cleaners that we mentioned. Also, with the fire extinguishers, FEDs are servicing and then recharging these fire extinguishers. This is a very hazardous job to do, and you need to be properly trained in order to do it. You're filling gas into a cylinder. It is extremely hazardous. Absolutely. What is the best way to, for someone to find out if a product they are selling or using is regulated as hazardous material? Uh, the first thing I would like for them to do is check the labelings on the box. It's a quick way to see if your product is hazardous in any way. OSHA has developed new standards over the years that require manufacturers to label specific information when dealing with a hazardous material. If you would like more information than the labeling on the box, I would consult the manufacturer or check the SDS, the safety data sheet. This document is more of a deep dive into the hazards of the product and also advice on safety precautions that labeling may not cover. That's awesome, a great resource certainly. So Charles, who regulates hazardous material? Well, there are different regulatory entities that do this. Uh, DOT, EPA, OSHA, all regulate different things for hazardous materials here in America. I would say OSHA for worker work safety, EPA for environmental safety, and DOT for transportation. So what is California's Proposition 65 and how do hazardous materials tie into that? California's Prop 65, and also known as the Safe Drinking Water and Toxic Enforcement Act of 1986, is intended to help Californians make informed decisions about protecting themselves from chemicals that could cause cancer, birth defects, or other reproductive harm. The idea is to mark and label products that contain chemicals which testing has shown to be harmful in one of the previous mentioned ways. They accomplish this by having products marked with a warning label, which I am certain everyone has come across before. Recently, this law has been amended to include websites and catalogs be marked to give information to Californian residents purchasing products through these channels. To follow up on the previous question, are there any laws, directives, or codes in HAZMAT that the industry needs to know? I would say it's very important for people in the industry to keep up with the laws and regulations as they're continually changing. Local and state laws differ from federal, so if you have any questions, I would, I would consult your local fire department or emergency response. 
Gotcha. Well, Charles, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Noah. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. And for all you guys watching at home, thank you for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe to the Brooks YouTube channel for more content just like this. Thank you.